Sail better, sail further, sail faster for cruisers. Part 1 Well, we all know that adage, two boats in the water, it's a race. But it's great when you catch someone up. It's also great when you overtake them. And, eventually, make the mark. But this isn't about racing. This is about cruising. This is about getting more out of your boat, making it sail faster, better and further. And we're going to start this series of videos right at the very beginning, keeping it simple and explaining things as we go. Sailing better means that you'll get more out of your boat when you take it out. You'll travel further and you'll travel faster and you'll learn to use tide and currents to increase that average speed. If you look at this graph you'll see that the difference between 5 knots over ground and 7 knots over ground is a stunning 24 miles. That's 24 miles better range in a day's sailing. If we take the same average speeds over 72 hours, 3 days, we go from 360 miles to 504 miles. That's a big difference. Sailing with an average speed that's higher increases your range. Hopefully everyone will get something from these videos. But let's start right at the very beginning with sailing terms. Let's assume, for illustration, that the wind is coming on the starboard side of this boat. Its windward side. Its port side is the lee side of the boat or leeward side. If the wind was coming over the port side, then the leeward side and the windward side would be reversed. However, port and starboard would remain the same. OK, let's look at the named part of your sails. For this illustration, I've drawn a Bermudan rig, which is fractionally rigged, but the named part of the sails remains the same on all triangular sails, including cutter and catch rig boats. The top of the sail is called the head. This is the main head and the jib head. The back edge of the sail is called the leech, the main leech and the jib leech. The back edge of the sail at the bottom is called the clue. So this is the main clue and of course the jib clue. The front edge of the sail or leading edge is the luff. That's the main luff and the jib luff. The front of the sail is called the tack. So we have a main tack and a jib tack. The bottom edge of the sail is called the foot, so we have the main foot and the jib foot. So for ease of reference I've called the front sail or foresail a jib, but of course you could be running a genoa. It's just for ease of explanation. Now in the illustration you'll recall that I made the wind come over the starboard side and there's a reason for that we'll go into later in the series. But of course you could be on a starboard tack or a port tack. Again, on a starboard tack, the wind is coming over the starboard side, or windward side, and a port tack, the wind is coming over the port side, which makes that the windward side. You may want to rewind the video and go back to the different parts of the sails. It will be important later when we describe what these parts of the sails do. OK, let's look at halyards and sheets. Sails are hoisted into position and held up by halyards. Halyards are fixed to the head of the sail and pull it upwards. A halyard can be used to add or lessen vertical tension to the luff of the sail. Remember this for later. Both mainsails and jibs have halyards. Downwind sails, like cruising chutes or spinnakers, or even Code D or Code Zeros, also have halyards and sheets. Let's go back to our boat again. You see that a main halyard attaches to the head of the sail, and the same with the jib halyard. It attaches here to the head of the sail. Sheets are lines that adjust the sail's angle to the wind, and on a jib it's foot tension too. Generally there are two sheets on a jib and one on a mainsail. However, some jibs can have a single sheet, and some mainsails can have two sheets. If a sail has two sheets, these are generally referred to as port and starboard 
sheets. Again, generally, on a mainsail, the sheet or sheets are connected to the boom. On a jib, the sheets are connected directly to the clue of the jib sail. So let's go back to our boat illustration. The main sheet connects to the boom and the jib sheets connect to the clue of the jib. Because the main sheet isn't connected directly to the clue, it's connected to the boom, we need something called a mainsail outhaul to adjust the clue of the mainsail. Once again, let's return to our model. The outhaul is connected to the back of the boom and the clue of the mainsail. This allows the mainsail's foot to be tensioned or the clue to be pulled aft. OK, let's look at jib cars or Genoa cars and tracks. Unlike a mainsail, a jib or Genoa doesn't have an outhaul. So how do we pull the clue backwards and change the shape of the foot of the sail like we do with the mainsail? Well, with a jib or Genoa, the sheet goes from the clue of the jib through a set of cars which are mounted on tracks and these cars can be adjusted. The cars allow the clue of the sail to be pushed forward or back. On some boats they'll be mounted on the coach roof and on some they'll be mounted on the deck. It depends on the type of rig you have. The cars can be adjusted on their track either fore or aft. Some are held with a pin which you release and some can be adjusted from the cockpit using this type of pulley system. These cars allow you to change the sheeting angle of the sail and its clue. Let's see how that works. Now remember, the luff of our sail remains fixed, but the clue can be adjusted either fore or aft. Adjusting the clue forward puts a bigger curve in the sail, lessens the tension on the foot and the leech. OK, let's summarise what we now know. We obviously know port from starboard, but we know windward from leeward, and this changes according to which side of the boat the wind is coming over. We know the named parts of the sails, we know what halyards and sheets are, and we know what an outhaul and jib cars do. We'll go into more detail about these items later in the series, but for now, let's show you what a topping lift is, a boom van, a backstay, a downhaul, and a main sheet traveller. For this, we'll go back to our trusty model. A topping lift is like a halyard. It's fixed to the back of the boom and can be tensioned to lift the boom up. Generally, you won't use it much when you're sailing. Backstays stop the mask going forward or tension it to pull it back at the top. On most boats, these are adjustable, but some boats have running backstays, which they can attach or detach according to where they are on attack, or point of sail. There are many different types of vang. Some are sprung, some have gas struts, and some are just plain line. But generally, they fit from the bottom of the mast to the underside of the boom and either hold it up or pull it down again depending on your point of sail and the prevailing conditions. Now not all boats will have a main sheet traveller. However, a main sheet traveller allows you to adjust the sheeting angle of the boom relative to the rest of the sail. Now let's look at a downhaul, and remember not all boats have downhauls. A downhaul attaches to a thing called a cunningham in the front tack of the sail. It allows you to tension this part of the sail. Now I've oversimplified some of these things, but let's have a summary. A topping lift holds the boom up. A boom vang adjusts the height of the boom. A backstay pulls the head of the mast aft. A downhaul pulls the sail down and in, tensions it, and a traveller adjusts the main sheet sheeting position. We'll go into the detail and function of these parts later in the series, but for now, we just want to identify them for you. OK, let's look at aerodynamics. This may sound complicated, but really it's quite simple. I've drawn this section of an aircraft wing and cut through it so you can see its shape. Note how it's curved on the top and trails or tapers back to a thinner edge at the rear. This is called the trailing edge. 
The front edge, well, that's the leading edge. The base of the wing, the part that fits to the aircraft, is called its root. And notice how the end of the wing tapers down. It's thinner in section and narrower. And when we turn the wing and stand it on its root, it looks just like a sail. And a sail works exactly the same as an aircraft wing, using aerodynamics. So let's look at these dynamic forces. It sounds complicated, but dynamic just means things that can vary. So here's our sail, or wing. Let's have a look at how it works. Air travelling over the leading edge of the wind, over the curve, and then off the trailing edge, has further to go on the upper surface than it does on the lower surface. The air on the upper surface has a greater distance to travel in the same time, and therefore it must travel faster. The air travelling faster causes low pressure on the top of the wing. We call this low pressure lift. If you look at the bottom of the drawing, you'll see there's some other dynamic forces. There's the driving force, as well as lift, there's sail force, the healing force, and there's drag. Because these different values are dynamic, we can change them by changing the angle, its shape, or its size, in exactly the same way as an aircraft does when it takes off or lands. So that's quite a lot. Let's have another summary. Sails work like an aircraft wing, generating drive force, lift, sail force, healing force, and drag. We call these dynamic forces because they vary, or can be altered. Yes, importantly, they can be altered. By altering the shape of the sail, its angle to the wind, or its size. We know that airflow over a sail or aerofoil section can give us drive force. That comes from the lift. As the air's speed over a sail increases, it can actually generate too much lift, too much drive force, too much healing force, and so what we need to do is change the shape of the sail, or change one or more of the dynamics. We already know that moving the clue forward puts a bigger curve in the sail, and the bigger the curve, the more lift, but we also get more drag so we actually want a flatter sail section when the air is moving faster over the sail. Flattening the sail reduces the drag, but it will also reduce the lift and the driving force. But remember, the air is travelling faster. It's a bit like gears on a car. When the air is travelling slowly, you need a big curve and lots of lift. The faster you go, the flatter the sail wants to be i.e. the faster the air travelling over the sail, the flatter it needs to be. Again, I've oversimplified this, and there are other factors. But let's look at angle of attack. Let's go back to our aircraft wing. If we tilt the wing of the aircraft upwards on the leading edge, the plane would stall and fall out the sky, and this is because there would be too much drag and turbulence on the trailing edge of the wing. The same thing happens with a sail on a sailboat. Set your sails with the wrong angle of attack and the sail will stall and you'll lose lift and driving force. Let's look at what happens if we set the angle of attack in the opposite direction. Pushing the leading edge in the opposite direction has a similar effect. The sail will stall and actually start to back if you look where the dotted line is on this drawing. You'll lose all your lift and driving force and you could actually end up going backwards or hoving too. Once again, I've simplified this and we'll go into it in more detail later. But here's a summary. You need to have the optimum airflow over your sail, the maximum lift and the correct angle of attack. OK, let's look at these three. Boat speed, true wind and apparent wind. If your boat speed over ground is 6 knots and the true wind is behind you at 5 knots, the apparent wind feels like 1 knot. On the other hand, if the wind was on your nose and the boat speed was 5 knots 
plus the true wind of 6 knots, the wind would apparently feel like 11 knots. But we can't sail directly into the wind. So let's return to our model again. So here we are back on our starboard tack. The true wind is coming over our starboard side at about 35-40 degrees, at about 5 metres per second. Our boat is moving at about 5 metres per second also, but the apparent wind is about 9 metres per second and slightly tighter angle at probably 20 degrees or so. As the boat moves forward at 5 metres per second, the apparent wind angle diminishes as we get faster. The true wind angle remains the same. The faster you go, the more the apparent wind angle will diminish until your boat's ability to sail to the apparent wind angle diminishes. Then you'll start to slow down again. And that's because your sails will stall and you'll lose all your lift. On a boat, we don't call this stalling. We call it luffing up. So I'm going to leave you today with another scenario. What happens when the wind comes from behind or on the beam? I'll leave it with you. Think about it. Until next time. As we said at the beginning, we've deliberately made this very simple and started with the basics. Hopefully, this series of videos is going to help you to sail better, to sail further, and to sail faster. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can see the next instalments of this series. Give us a like, a thumbs up, and share. Or become a Patreon for as little as the cost of a cup of coffee a month. Until next time, sail safe.